If you got an ultimate team, or is it just couch play? No, I'm okay. Like really average, yeah. So then he used to be. Sorry, Spencer. Used, oh, used to wow. be. Used to. The used world to play anymore. No, no, I still he play. Just, okay. Oh, he's still insane, but he was actually the world champion. And won wow. the, uh, the world wow. cup. But can I ask you a question? I don't know if he's the same like us. Do you train a lot? It, obviously, I think it, it differs player to player. Do you mm. think your mentality is what made you a professional footballer? Then? I don't think so, no? to be honest. Just a natural born goal scoring machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the XL Boot Room podcast presented by JD. My name is Andy. I am joined by Gorilla. And who else are we joined by Spencer today? We have, well, we're not our normal setup. We are at the Leeds Stadium, Ellen Road, and we have a special guest, Wilfred Nonto. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for your time. I hope to enjoy myself with you guys. Yeah, we were just talking about how terrible interviews are. Yeah. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to talk an absolute load of rubbish about literally whatever you want to talk about. So I guess the first thing is this podcast is football and FIFA. So then you are a footballer. First question, do you play FIFA? Yeah, yeah. I like to play with friends, you know. I don't really like to play alone like this. I'm not so much on the PlayStation, but I like to play with friends. Have you got an ultimate team or is it just couch play? No, just couch. Just couch play, yeah. okay. Interesting. Are you? No. Oh, no. 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 I'm okay. Like really average. Yeah. So then he used to be. Sorry, Spencer. He used, oh, to, used wow. to be. Used to. The used world to play cha- anymore. No, no, I still he play. Just, okay. Oh, he's still insane. But he was actually the world champion. Yeah. So he was literally the best player in the world. I won wow. the, uh, the world wow. cup. But wow. enough about me. I'm currently. No, I'm not. No, I'm you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, you're not. No, so, <laughs> would you say, in terms of Leeds United players for FIFA, where would you rank yourself? Would you put in the top five, or is there other players that are better than you? I don't know because I I haven't really played with all of them. Yeah, I was going to so, say. I guess who, who is it? Just your mates that you play with, rather than the lads from Leeds? It depends. I played with Cree Crescencio. Okay, sometimes and like I think he's better than me, but. I can't tell him, you know. <laughs> I'm proud, so I'd like to say, no, I'm better than you, but I think he's better than me. Just a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. 51-49. Yeah, like this. Yeah, like this. Yeah. yeah, don't give him too yeah. much. You can't give him too yeah. much. Okay. Have you ever been an ultimate team at all then? Not really? Not no. really. I play sometimes, but not really. My not so much. biggest thing whenever I meet a footballer is have you got that special card of yourself? No, I don't No! Have you don't no. have the 99 no. rate card? Okay. No. Right, what we'll do... Because I don't really play. So I'll tell you my... PlayStation Network name, and then you, you tell EA <laughs> that that's your account, you. and yeah, then yeah. I'll get a 99 rated yeah. version of you, and I'll batter everyone online, and everyone will think you're really good at FIFA. There we yeah. go. That's foolproof. That's, yeah, I like you'll, it. You'll get people tweeting saying that they've played in bits actually. Yeah, yeah. they <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting tweets saying you just lost six yeah. one, and I'll be like, yeah. oh, <laughs> okay. It's just couch play over FIFA. Do you play anything else? Uh, I'm what? starting Call of Duty, oh, okay. but it's too difficult. Really? It's too difficult. Yeah. I've, Headache, you know. Okay. So, Are we talking campaign, online, war zone? Online and war zone, yeah. Okay. But it's have you got any dubs? No. 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 Oh, but, sorry, what you need to do with your tarot blood cards, because this is what I do, <laughs> is just find three other people who are really good <laughs> and you just run and just you just run around behind them and they kill everyone. <laughs> and you shoot them a little bit and it says you got an yeah. assist and then they're just like bang, they're dead, and you're like I used to do it on Fortnite every okay. time, every time because I was really bad, but yeah, now it's okay. You know? Do you, outside of football, do you get a lot of free time, like on a, on a weekly basis? I assume a lot of that is training and recovery, but <laughs> you know, you said you don't play too much FIFA, but outside of maybe video games, is there any other hobbies or interests that you do outside of uh, video games? Depends. Like, I like to go out. Yeah. I don't really like to stay home. You know, I'm not someone who stay home every day and play only FIFA. You know, I like to go home to, I don't know, chill, go to the restaurant, cinema. So we just try to change. I have some good friends in Leeds, so we just try to, Change every time. Bits and bobs, do some stuff out and about. Okay. What's your yeah. what's your go to restaurant then? Or what's Sorry. your go to cuisine? But like can I with? can I say it? Yeah, yeah, say what you want. Yeah. Italian, of course. Yeah. I like San Carlo in Leeds. Okay. Yeah, I go every time. Only like when I miss Italy, I just go there, speak with them a little bit in Italian. And I feel like I'm home. Nice. What's your go to dish at San Carlo then? Carbonara. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, mate. Hundred uh, percent. Cream just. So if you went to an Italian restaurant, what would you have? It depends how good of an Italian restaurant, I guess. If it's like truly authentic with like a but really, really good chef, then I'd get like a seafood risotto or like seafood pasta or something like that. Whereas if it was 
okay, it's just on a high street. I'll just get pizza just because it's safe. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. if it's like a really, really good, mm-hmm. like I love Italian food, but I love really good yeah. Italian food. Yeah. I don't want to go to Bella Italia. It's proper terrible. But like, but do you prefer pasta or pizza? Pizza. Okay, so here's one. Right, uh, pizza is the answer to that. Me and my girlfriend always have an argument: pizza or burgers. If you had to get oh. rid of one, <laughs> pizza. Or burgers. Re- so, okay. That's disrespectful <laughs> for me. <laughs> wow, that's so, not the same level, you know. So I pick pizza, but okay. there is a good argument. So okay, right. Before I offend you too much and you stall out, I'm going to try and explain myself. Yeah. So <laughs> take your time, please. <laughs> a really, 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 really good burger could be the best thing that you've ever had. Whereas a really bad burger is absolutely terrible. Whereas all pizza's amazing. So if you had to pick one, you go pizza because you can't get a bad pizza. You can. No, you you can't can't get it. You can, you can. Are you sure? Okay. What's the worst pizza you've ever had in your life then? I think it was uh, with the national team. Okay. Every time we go like abroad. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Yeah, after the games, you used to... Like get I don't know burgers one time uh, pizza and every time we go abroad the pizza is really bad you know? <laughs> every time the same but you just take it because you're hungry but it's so bad just I'm, bad yeah it's made me remember actually there is terrible pizza have you ever had Chicago style pizza yes what's this deep pan ah yeah, yeah. mate <laughs> no, sorry it's no, no, so no. like proper Italian style <laughs> no, no, in no. a stone oven. Amazing. Chicago style pizza Chicago is style. absolutely horrendous. So did you answer it? Did you say pizza or pasta? I said pizza. Pizza. Pizza or pizza, pasta, 100%. Yeah. Pizza or burgers, I have to like think about. But Do you know I what? Pizza. A no, good no, no. burger is, is good. Where Ruffer is just going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love Italian food. Mediterranean food in general, I mm-hmm. absolutely love. So then my fr- I've never actually been to Italy. I really, really need to go. No. Wow. It's on my bucket list of places to go where you go to the yeah. south of Italy and it's like a lovely Mediterranean, yeah. go and walk into town, go for dinner, have some wine, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then just history as well, like to go to Rome and to see all of the historic like sites. Shopping, stuff. Milan. Yeah, exactly. With your girlfriend, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the hell? So Cut this one. <laughs> it's after cut up my credit yeah. card before yeah. we went. Is there a place in Italy that you'd recommend, you know, if I was booking a vacation? Uh, Rather than like Milan, Rome, like it's anywhere that uh, yeah. is not as common. Hidden gem? Yeah. It depends. I feel like Tusca- Tuscany. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's like the classic. Yeah. Because you have a little yeah. bit of everything, you know, you can just change. I would say it's Tuscany, but I'm from North Italy, so I would say Milan because it's my favorite city. Where's your favorite place to go then? So for me, I go to Greece. Greece is my go-to place. That's like my Mediterranean mm-hmm. where I go. And I need to go to Italy because yeah. it looks amazing as well. Where do you go? When season finishes, when football's over and you can chill, uh, where you're off? I would say Spain. Like outside of Italy, Spain because I, I like the vibes, you know, a little bit. It's quite similar as Italy, so I would say Spain. Barcelona maybe. Okay, nice. Yeah. Have you ever been to Barcelona? I have actually. In <laughs> twen- not on holiday though. I had a, okay. um, I had a FIFA tournament. Ah, yeah. So I didn't have time to go and do any uh, sightseeing. Mm-hmm. But no, it was a, it was a nice um, a nice place. I've been to Madrid as well. Yeah. Um, but you've um, you, you played with Zurich before in Switzerland. Yeah. How was yeah. that? It's perfect. For, yeah. the, for the life, I think it was the best I ever have you, experienced. Have you, ever been, yeah. you ever been to Switzerland? I've seen Switzerland, yeah. but only on the other side of a mountain when I was <laughs> at the top of it skiing. Yeah. And you can, if you ski down the opposite side, you can ski you can, into Switzerland yeah. to go, which is really, really cool. Have you, ever, have you ever been skiing? Uh, no. no. Are, you, are you not allowed to go skiing because of football? Like, not. I'm not allowed. I could do it, but it's still better to be it, careful. It's risky. Know? Yeah. yeah. If, he, if he falls over. No, yeah, imagine. Yeah. That's not good. Just break my knee <laughs> skiing. It's Yeah. Like, Insurance I think Manuel Neuer yeah. had it this Did year. It? Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, he had it. Nine, and it's yeah. so long for nothing, you know. Yeah, so just better. for a week yeah. holiday. Wait until you're retired. Yeah. Skiing. So, have you ever been skiing? No, Mate, I can't so think of anything worse. worse. Really? No. Oh, it's amazing. But you, no. if you're from the north of Italy, it's like no, 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 no. I'm the really Alps bad. are right there. No, no, no. no. <laughs> skiing and swimming. No. No. Tobogganing is the furthest. You'll get me on Any, anything to do with snow like that. Tobogganing. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> just an old <laughs> sledge. <laughs> okay. Something I'm super interested in, anyway. Then, just me personally is. I love to go skiing. I love to go like hiking up in the mountains and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Is some is that something you would do when you were a kid? Did you so how close is Milan actually to the Alps? Uh 
I would say a couple of hours, but oh, okay. not so, so it's not close yeah, it's, enough to be like, oh, no, n- no, let's go for no, a walk. It's not okay. that you say, no, I just go and I go, no, sure. no, no. It's, it's like actually two, three hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Maybe not then. That'd be. But, but I wouldn't do it. Still. No, still. No, no. So then where were you in, in Switzerland? You were in Zurich? Yeah. And it's also two hours, I think. Okay. It's not like living in Geneva or something no, like that? No, no. Okay. But I wouldn't do it. I don't really like swimming and skiing, sorry, so I wouldn't do it. Fair enough. I feel like skiing is dangerous. Well, it, it Maybe kind of Maybe you know what you're doing, but you're going, I don't know. I've seen videos where stuff has happened and I'm not a fan of it. But my problem is I don't really like when it's too cold. Okay. So I don't see myself skiing. But you got like... Yeah, no, thermals, it's too cold. So the goggles yeah. on. It's sunny. You sit nah, there with nah. beer. Oh, it's amazing. Anyway, okay. Amazing. Yeah. That's, that's so, not amazing. That's so good. <laughs> golf and skiing. Yeah, yes. we were talking before the podcast started. You are very anti golf, but all of, not all of, but a lot of the Leeds players must yeah. play golf because it's such a footballer thing to do. Yeah. Have they not tried to rope you onto the driving range to have a go? Not really. I, I wanted to try paddle, to be fair, but not golf. Like, I see them going, they speak about golf like it was, oh, it's exciting, you know, wow, it was so nice, but I don't really see why. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't think I will try it, you know. You're only young though. You are, to throw in a random fact for the people watching, you are Italy's youngest goal scorer. But how <laughs> yeah. old are you? You are 18 now? No, I'm 19, 19 now. now. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're 29, then you'll play golf. Trust me. In 10 years time. Trust me. 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Give me 10 years and you'll like golf. <laughs> but I'm 26 and I have no interest in golf. Whatsoever. So you have three I'm years. Three years. Three, <laughs> three years, years maybe. Years everything will change. He leaves his bedroom. He doesn't just play FIFA. True. I didn't want to play FIFA. It's expensive though, golf is. Isn't it? Like golf is expensive. All the equipment and stuff. I'd imagine it's quite expensive. When you hit as many golf balls into lakes as I yeah. do, <laughs> it's very then it's, expensive. Yeah. What's your go-to sport then if you're not playing football? You, did you say you tried paddle? That's like tennis, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's fun you know just go there it's not as difficult as tennis so it, you can just go pick there pick it up and go yeah, yeah what is that your go-to or do you rather play something else maybe basketball even okay. if i'm short you know i like basket like it's funny to watch it's like only for the atmosphere i'd say okay i was gonna say can you dunk no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, the, with the chair maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> how do you call this like oh Foosball, table football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is this is the best, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's a sport or Yeah, not, I know what you mean. You get a few people that are just like aggressive with yeah. it. Yeah, and it's like kicking the, yeah, the whole I table. I like you. Yeah, they like pick up the table. <laughs> That's really funny, you know. Yeah. Have you got this one in the, the training ground? I think so. I think we have it, but we never really play. Fair. But wow, this... That's the best. When I used to be younger, I was like every time on it, you know. Could you do that? Like, could you see people play it and they like pass it to a player? Yeah. And then stop it <laughs> and then dribble it around. Can you do that? No, okay. That's too far from too me. But... <laughs> but better than me where I just randomly spin the things. and. But normally you can't do it. It's like spin it every time. You can get like the ball. If you play like, seriously, yeah. you can't do it. You're not allowed no. to do that. There's no. like certain rules, I think. Yeah, you, you can can't... only do it like this. Yeah, you can't just not like flick it and flick it. it. I don't think anyway. I mean, there's like, well, you no. can. Yeah. You, <laughs> <to do that. laughs> you, you can. You can. Do, but it's it's yeah, but. do you play, um, is it, I don't know what it's called. Is it football tennis? It's like a little, yeah. 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 It looks yeah. fun. It's, this is fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I think I've tried once before team. and that wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the quality of yeah, the players as well. You know? yeah. yeah, but it's fun. Is that something you guys do in training or? Uh, when I was in Switzerland, we used to do it way more but here not so much okay that's something that's i've fine. always been curious about with football training is how much of it is like really structured serious doing drills i guess like practice 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 and how much of it is just it depends having a game of footy i think it depends on like coaches uh days as well you know because some t- some days you can do it it's a little bit more fun a little bit more games and some days it's like only tactics and things like this. So it sure. depends. So then I am now just curious about football. So <laughs> when you're training with tactics, how do you do it? Like, how does it actually work? So do, you, <laughs> do you stand there without a ball and the coach will line you up? Like You're an attacker, obviously, but like yeah. defensive tactics where they line the four defenders up and then say, imagine a ball's coming from here. Where should you be? And they're trying to position it. How does it work? Yeah, I think both. Like sometimes it's without the ball. Like in Italy, we do this a lot without the ball, just running, moving, and you don't really see the ball. So it just 
you just imagining in imagining yeah 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 you just try to think where the ball could be and move so it's quite difficult for me but here it's like everything is with the ball so it's just funny you just run a little bit yeah which one do you think takes or which one do you prefer because obviously there'll be different some people will prefer with <laughs> some people prefer without no i prefer with the ball <clears throat> you prefer with? yeah every time with the ball do you think that's because you're an attacker so everything for you is get the ball and try and make something happen or is that just you as a person no i think everyone prefers with the ball because okay. like when you <clears throat> start to play football you don't think oh i'm going to be a defender or an attacker you just try to be with the ball sure so maybe like now that I'm growing up, I prefer with the ball because I'm like this as a person and as, as a player. But I think everyone prefers it. Okay. It's so like back in school for me, it's like you have like a, a lesson, mm -hmm. like uh, football, and the, the, the footballs are in the back. You got to do like your stretches and that, but I just want to get the football yeah. and start playing. So, so yeah. you don't really care about <coughs> tactics and yeah, all these things. You know, you just, the ball. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's because I'm bad at football. That's, <laughs> that's, where, that's where I think it's interesting. But then. <laughs> With professional football, <laughs> everyone is really good at football yeah. because they're professional footballers. So they just find in them minute differences or places where you can win instead. So I was listening to clips of a podcast. Sean Dyche has just become the other yeah. manager. So I was listening to some of his stuff back and he was talking about his defensive V mm -hmm. and how when the ball shifts across, all of the defenders should shift across the pitch as well. But they should all have like a mental connection between each yeah. other. So they shift in unison to always yeah. keep the V pointing in the right direction. I think stuff like that is like, yeah, is. that's what normal yeah. people don't get to see. Like, yeah, we see you control the ball really well, dribble past someone and score a goal. And you're like, bloody hell, he's got a football, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But actually, the, <laughs> there are a lot of the mental small things stuff that you is, don't really see. Yeah. yeah. What, I guess I'm asking you a really open ended question. <laughs> is there any other examples you can think of of things like that? So, like, if you're picking up a, if somebody passed me the ball, all I think of is, oh, don't mess this touch up and just try and control it. Is that so natural and instinctive for you that you're already thinking about something else before the ball has even got to your feet? Yeah, <laughs> but just because I do it every day, you know, since I was five, I play football every day. So at one point it just became natural. And I feel like, yeah, I just to trace something else because I know that you know, in the Premier League, everyone is good, uh, everyone is fast, everyone is strong. So you have to find something new to to just try to win games, to do the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important part for me because I'm a striker and everyone now is watching my videos, what I do, what I prefer to do. I like to cut inside, go outside. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just try to change every time and that's what I try to train. What, what would you say, obviously, going from Switzerland to the Premier League now, what would you say is the most difficult thing of being a Premier League footballer is? Uh, the intensity. The intensity. <clears throat> yeah. Because I think a lot of just, people say that, don't Yeah, you? it's run every time, you know. And all the teams are good, so you can't really calm yourself, you know, because you, you just risk to take five goals and you, then you, you go home, you know. And we had it this week and the first half was, we were like killing them. Playing well. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the second half, you just close your eyes a little bit and you're 3-1. So yeah, that's difficult every every weekend. But people jump to conclusions with that as well. The difference between them two things, it's like balanced on yeah. a knife edge where it is 50.1 versus 49.9 and then it tips to 49.8 yeah. and then you can yeah. see the three goals. Like yeah. it's it goes everyone's so, so good at football. Yeah. yeah. The differences are absolutely that's where I find it really, really interesting is yeah. trying to like if, like you said, everyone's really good at football. Yeah. Everyone in the Premier League is insane at football. It's but is why is why is Kevin De Bruyne? the best yeah. centre attack in mid in the Premier League. What makes Haaland score, other than the fact that De Bruyne's passing the ball, <laughs> score 30 <laughs> goals? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yes, there's physical attributes and I'm sure he's drilled yeah. shooting and stuff like that. But what when he sees some, when you see somebody running down the line, whoever it may be, ready to put the ball into the box, what is, is there anything conscious in your head? Does it all become so unconscious that you just do it naturally? Mm -hmm. Or do you constantly try and, what I'm trying to say, your touches become so unconscious, your finishings become so unconscious, you get drilled on the training ground yeah. to the point where it should be unconscious where to go. Do you then have a thought in your head, like this is what I'm going to do and this is going to make it work? Like are you thinking get to the front post, make sure I'm in front of my man, make sure I'm getting goal yeah. side, what's staying, like what is it that? Yeah, but I think it becomes uh normal because you do it every time sure like if you don't do something 
how can it be normal? Like, it's difficult, you know? But the way we train, the way we play, I think helps us to to be like normal, to to feel like we are doing normal things and easy things, even when maybe they're not. Sure. And I think like it's only training, you know? And also like talent. Some players do does certain things, but they don't really realize what they are doing, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you don't really think what you are doing, but you do it. You end up in the yeah. zone. Yeah. yeah. And it just happens. Yeah. So I think it's a good mix between these two things. Talent. When, when you're playing against whether it's fullbacks or any defenders, <coughs> in game, are you conscious of that? For example, if you're playing up against a right back, mm -hmm. are you conscious of, you know, for example, you're trying to take them on and maybe they'll get the ball. Are you conscious of maybe the next time round you'll try something different? Are you always thinking every every time you have the ball? Depends. I'm not someone who thinks so much, you know. I try to see, it depends on the situations, but I try to react what the defender is going to do, you know. So I don't really know when I'm going to take him on or when I'm going to pass it, but I just try to see the situation yeah. and react. Just let it happen. Yeah. So then sports psychology is something I was super interested in. Mm -hmm. The flow state essentially is the colloquial name for it, where you're so in the zone, mm -hmm. you don't realize what you're doing and everything's just yeah. happening around you. And then a couple of minutes later, you'll be like, I just knocked yeah. it through his legs, ran round him and put it top bins. And I don't even remember <laughs> yeah. it happening, yeah. but your body's so focused. Do you, I guess from a personal perspective, I'm just curious, how do you guys work with sports psychologists and stuff like that to, is it more about making you guys confident and happy and so that you can play well? Or do you focus on like very specific things like that? I think, yeah, yeah, we work, yeah, we have like, for example, us, we have a, a psychologist at the training ground. So I think it depends on the person. Yeah, you I was going to say, it's a very individual thing, yeah, isn't it? Where yeah, some people just do that some, straight yeah, away and need confidence. Yeah. Other people are supremely confident. Yeah, it depends on the person. So okay. I feel like in it, in the in my team, for example, we have different type of players, different type of person as well. So you don't know. Some people are confident. They don't really need anyone, you know, and they are like this. They are confident. They just try to take him on. They miss. It's the same, you know. Yeah. Some people are, oh, they miss one. They are, ah, the next one, I'm not sure, you know. They start to be not so sure. But I feel like it's important, you know, because if you are confident, if you are calm, if you are happy, you can also play better. Sure. Where do you think you would come on that scale from supreme swagger, we'll say, of... <laughs> I'm amazing at football. I'll just take you on mm -hmm. to, I need to drill this over and over again to be able to do it. <laughs> do you think you are a swagger or a, what got no. you to become a professional footballer? I guess it's probably a more I generic think, way. To, is yeah. it hard work and just endless practice, practice, practice? Is uh, it mental and depends. you're so confident on how mm -hmm. you can just give me a chance and I'll score? Or is it- I think I'm in the middle. Somewhere in the middle? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm confident, like, I know that I'm I'm a good player, you know. I don't I know what I'm I can do good and what maybe I have to improve. Mm -hmm. So I try to work on my weakness every day and but still knowing that I'm I can do something good, you know. I don't know how to say it, but I'm confident. Yeah. At, at the same time I know that I have to improve a lot. Do you so, ever, do you ever watch your own games back? Because for me, from like FIFA tournaments, if I have a bad tournament, mm -hmm. I'll go and watch, you know, the games back. So is that something that you yeah. do personally? Yeah, personally and with the team as well. Yeah. Like, I also, uh, straight after the game, I know what I, I've done good and what I, I haven't. So I have it in my head. And I when something goes wrong, like, I can't sleep. For example, yeah. I think and think and think every time so that I, I know what I have to improve. And the next day, I, I'm someone who wants to do it straight away, you know, because I can't accept that I'm... This might sound like a silly question, but... Is it hard to replicate training into then a Premier League game? I don't think you can repli replicate exactly yeah. what you, you train, you know, but yeah, sometimes the, the situations are quite similar, so you know what you can do. Yeah. It's a case of that, the flow state again, if you've yeah. done it so yeah. many times in training. It just, it just happens yeah. in the game yeah. anyway. Yeah. And yeah. yes, you, and you know, what, know what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. opposing defender might be trying to kill you, mm. whereas <laughs> <laughs> your, your, <laughs> your teammate is only just trying to gently tackle you so yeah. it doesn't injure you in training. But if you've done that same, I'm on the edge of the box, I'm yeah, running into the box, I'm yeah. going to finish it. It's 
Yeah, it should it be. Quickly. Yeah, it should be the same mm-hmm. thing. So then, but can I ask you a question? Sure. How is it like playing? Because it's, I don't know if it's the same like us. Do you train a lot? I, like, what do you train? Yeah. So oh. obviously, I think it, it differs person, uh, player to player. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, for example, I have a tournament in like two weeks, like mm-hmm. a big tournament. So I will put even more time into mm-hmm. playing. Um, but I think every day I've just got to keep on playing against top players, okay. so I can keep my level at the top and yeah. learning new things. I think I think it's easy to keep on playing FIFA yeah. and not improve. But you know, if someone else mm-hmm. is then improving. So I need to go out my way, watch game, play back, and mm-hmm. try new things. And I suppose that's the same with with football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I've always found interesting. With as FIFA becomes a sport, mm-hmm. as it becomes an esport, there is especially in East Asia, in Korea, for example, yeah. is huge on esports, but it's huge on like League of Legends or Dota or something like that. CS:GO in Europe has got quite a big following, and Call of Duty. Yeah. In North America, it's got like Optic and Phase yeah. and stuff like that. They have teams and houses that they live in, yeah. and they have like a professional mm. football. They have sports yes. psychologists and nutritionists, yeah. and they make them go to bed Secret, at nine yeah. PM and get up at six AM and go to. Do I guess have you tried to implement that yourself, Spencer, to make your life like Wilfried's more regimented, and you have to go to training, yeah. and you do this, and you are supremely focused on that, or is FIFA still in its infancy where? It's not that you're just playing a game because that's to diminish it, yeah. but it hasn't grown to the point of you have a nutritionist and you have a dietitian, or a dietitian is the same thing. You have a sports psychologist. You train macros from 11 a.m. till 12 yeah. p.m. And then you, do, you get like, where do you think it is on that timeline? I still think it's early doors. I mean, if we're talking FIFA specifically, my experience, I think when I was um, 17 and I started mm-hmm. playing FIFA like competitively, I'd wake up at, 1 p.m. in the afternoon but now as i get older and i have other responsibilities i'm more okay let's get up at 8 a.m i've got the whole day ahead of me but for me personally i've realized over the past two years i've had to have some kind of help mentally with it like a psychologist more in-game and how to deal with certain situations and i'd imagine that'd be similar similar to to football because listen i can be the most confident person of my ability but sometimes someone just needs a bit of help how to deal with maybe going one nil down and you didn't deserve to go one yeah. nil down and stuff like that. So for me, I, you know, I've, I've got into a situation where I'm, I'm more aware of what I need and I'm more honest with myself um, in, 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 in uh, different environments. I think that's good though. I think the yeah. more serious you guys take it as players, the more serious uh, esports will become in the same yeah. way as yeah. what your life is like now with, I'm, so I'm making assumptions, but I assume leads cook you your breakfast and your lunch and like here's a super healthy lunch you have i hope you like chicken rice and broccoli because you're having chicken rice and broccoli and then tomorrow we'll have rice broccoli and chicken and it's like the same stuff the more if you look at football 50 years ago everybody smoked went to pub people could be unfit and still not unfit but like not supreme athletes Mm -hmm. like every footballer is now and still be a professional footballer people if you go back 100 years People who played for England would play for England for football and cricket and rugby because they were just good at sports and you didn't need to be a specialist. As football has progressed and been taken that stuff more serious, it's become a more serious sport and it's now the biggest sport in the world. And there's billions of pounds in it. Of course. As you guys do that with FIFA and esports, do you think it's going to get more serious or I don't know? Do you you feel like eventually? Maybe not whilst you're playing. Yeah, you might maybe be, not. I'll be you, you might be the, six, the 66 <laughs> World uh, Cup team. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be six, well, I'll be six years old playing FIFA tournaments. But, but there's some kid who's just been born now might end up being a professional FIFA yeah, player, but he has a to move away from now. home and live in a boarding school and yeah, train yeah. FIFA. Every, it's, it's a lot more serious. I know yeah. what you mean. I think FIFA esports has grown massively, I think, over the past five years from my perspective. Um, and I think kind of bridging that gap, because I'm not, I'm aware that football and FIFA is like, you can't, it's not the same thing, right? Obviously, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. So I think bridging that gap, and I think football's definitely helped with FIFA, you know, like yourself, coming on this type of podcast. So I think, you know, maybe when I'm not competing anymore, it will get into that situation. But I think it has got a lot more serious over, yeah, over the years because, you know, even Leeds United, they've obviously, you know, got yeah, their own players. So. They've just won the Premier League. Do they? Yeah. Nice. I met, I met the guy, you know. Beat me in the final. <laughs> yeah. Beat me in the really? final. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll move on from that. It's okay. Yeah, they they beat they beat me in my teammate um, in in the final. But um, Oli Lito, he's he's a nice guy. But 
you know, so football teams and big organizations getting involved is is only a positive for, for FIFA. Yeah. Do you think, well, Freed, okay, so this is a two-part question. Do you mm. think your mentality is what made you a professional football then? Because you were talking about how you can't yeah. sleep when you do something wrong, which I am a little bit like that. But mm. whenever you hear a professional footballer talk about it, it's always like so extreme. So then it's that that level of mentality that I can't even comprehend existing. I don't think so, no? to be honest. I think... Uh, Just a natural born goal scoring machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but I don't think my mentality brought me here, you know, but okay. I feel that my mentality could bring me at the top level. Okay. So, like, I feel like everyone could be a footballer, you know, you have the quality, you can just be there, you do some sacrifices. I think that's all, also the most important part, like doing some sacrifices, being, like, really serious. But I feel like the mentality always Im- try to improve training could bring me at okay. the top. So, so yeah, that's see- made the difference, you know? I seen an interesting quote where you said you like basketball. A retired NBA player went to a Division One college and started just doing one v ones with the players. And these are like elite level college kids in America who are trying to get into the NBA. And this guy was like forty five, something like that, and he just destroyed them. Mm-hmm. And he came off that he came off the court and said to them, "Kids, I am closer to LeBron than you are to me." and he's retired for like 15 years i think what you said then about how you've become a footballer but it's your mentality that you think can take you to the top of football i don't think people often understand how good you have to be what the gulf is between just becoming a professional footballer and the north point like a professional footballer is the north point not one percent of the population but Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Haaland, De Bruyne are the no point not 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 one percent of that no point not one percent. Like that's the the goal, I guess, and that's the mentality that you then need to have if you want to get to that point. Yeah, hundred percent. Feel like that's what makes the difference. Like if you see it, for example, Cristiano Ronaldo, maybe. He wasn't as talented as Messi, for example, but he was still there, you know, competing every year. And that was because of his mentality, you know, he's mm-hmm. different. Do you, do you have a football idol or someone growing up that you used to watch all the time? Messi. <laughs> Messi. 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 Like, without comparison, I feel like Messi was my idol growing up and was my role model. Yeah, I only like to watch him, watch his videos and yeah. He's a good player, isn't he? He's quite good. He's, yeah, like, yeah, he's, he's quite, quite good, good. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no late in veins, but quite good. <laughs> Is there somebody... So you got called up to the national team. Yeah. Uh, you are, as we've said, Italy's youngest ever goal scorer, which is yeah. crazy. That's an <laughs> insane stat. I think the record That's stood great, for yeah. like 70 years or something yeah. crazy like yeah. that, and then you just rocked up and back <laughs> no. to goal. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there somebody in the national team who you seen training playing like you got called up to the team and obviously i'm sure you knew the bumped into the players or spoke to them and stuff like that before but you turned up to your first training session for the national team seen somebody play and thought oh my god that guy is like on it like he is that is why he's that good ah i don't know i don't know like or did you rock up and think i'm gonna score and then you did and no no (laughs) (laughs) i didn't do it but i remember when i was there like my first training i used to watch kellini yeah because obviously like he made his debut when i was one i think one year old or something like this you know so being there with him was like for me was crazy you know and he's a, a simple guy he's like a normal really normal guy you know so i thought Wow, he's the one of the best defenders in, in the world, you know, and in the history maybe. And he's like calm, simple, he like just goes on in the training ground and just give everything. So I thought, wow, if he does it, then I have to do it as well. You know, I have to be there, I have to train every day, be focused every time. And yeah, that's what I try to do. Is there a major difference between the Premier League and going to play for your national team? Whether it's training or the actual game itself? Actually, the difference is big, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's different, you know, like also the trainings are different. 
the games, I have the feeling that are way different because in the Premier League, I feel like it's only like running everywhere, you know. And with the national team, is everything is more calm, everything more composed. Maybe also because the Italian national team is different from yeah. England football, you know. So yeah, I, I see some differences. Yeah, no, the, I think the, from what I've seen, obviously watching on TV, the Premier League is a lot more fast paced. Yeah. And then you know when you go and watch, you know, for example, for me, England, you know, it's a bit more tactical. Would yeah. you say, and a bit yeah. more, a bit more yeah. slow? So yeah, no, I see that from a from a viewer's perspective. I've always been intrigued with national team football managers because you work with your manager day in day out yeah. all of the time he tries to instill this is how you attack this is how you defend this is what we do this is our ethos this is the way we play but then there's so many different teams with so many different ethoses so then does is there an italian national team ethos that you then have to abandon the Leeds United one and try to relearn or get back into the mentality of or I guess I always kind of think of it from defense forward whereas when you're an attacker you might have a little bit more freedom to just try and get into a good position and try and score whereas if Chiellini is playing next to Bastoni or something like yeah. that for example and for Inter their mentality is step out and have a press whereas Chiellini's is drop yeah. back it and then the two of them you put them next to each other and you're like oh my god what are they gonna do like how yeah it's difficult to be fair it's difficult because like you play with different players of course they are top players but you don't really see each other for a long time you know you don't really play together so every time you go there you have to learn something new you know because you have to learn each other you have to learn what the coach wants and it's difficult you know but i feel like with the with Mancini, I'm really lucky because he tries to play an attacking football. We just try to play football, you know, so we just enjoy ourselves. And for me, because I'm an attacker, it's easier, I can say. Mm -hmm. And also I have a good connection with him. Uh, he just tried to help me every time since, since the first day. So I'm just happy with him, yeah. Is it hard to adjust from like maybe the instructions you get from the both different managers, whether it's for Leeds or Italy? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what instructions you'd have specifically, but... I suppose when you go and play for Italy and then you come back to Leeds, yeah. is there like a few days you have to go on the training <laughs> ground where you have to get used to playing for Leeds again, if that makes sense? Yeah, like, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's difficult. A little yeah. bit of both, yeah. you know, because like not only on football, but like in the national team, we have different habits. So every time I come back, I take some days to just really come back and say, oh, I have to do this, this, this. Mm -hmm. So I haven't jet lag? Even though you only went yeah, to sometimes, <laughs> yeah, because it's different, you know. Sure. But yeah, I like it because, all, of course, playing for the national team and playing for Leeds is incredible, you know. So I just try to enjoy every moment and have fun every time, you know. Nice. You said before, when you went away with the national team, you always get terrible pizza. Yeah. Like, my favorite yeah. thing about going on holiday <laughs> is going and trying the local food. Yeah. Where's the best place that you have been to? Or do you not get, so I guess, to take it back a little bit, what is the is it a very enclosed bubble when yeah. you go away with the national team and you sort it you get on the plane you land at HQ you get driven to Italy's training center and yeah. you get the bus to where you need to go and then you get on the plane and you never do you ever get to go out and do exploring not or really. any free time no, no not really not really oh, that would be my dream thing to be able to do like That's... oh we're playing Spain hang on I'll just pop and get some tapas yeah. or something like that no 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 you can't do it but I remember <laughs> when I was with the under seventeen we played the World Cup in Brazil. And there we had uh, some times off, you know, so we had time to, I don't know, try the their cuisine, for example, or try some things, go a little bit out and yeah, enjoy it. It was a good experience, okay. you know. But well, usually it's quite isolated. Yeah, it was still isolated, but we had chance to go out, see a little bit, I don't know, sure. the city. Interesting. Stuff. Yeah. So that's like you said you went to Barcelona, but never got to see Barcelona. No, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I think that was more my own decision <laughs> because, I don't know, when I go away for tournaments, it's like, my my focus is on playing yeah. and, and watching gameplay and stuff like that. But maybe I kind of regret it now looking back. Maybe I should have explored a little bit more. Yeah, you could always same. go back to Barcelona. It was um, Singapore for me. I went to Singapore for a tournament, which is lovely. Very hot. Yeah. But they couldn't do anything. But I couldn't do anything. I Singapore was time. miles away as well. That, it was a long yeah. flight. Yeah. It was yeah. A very long flight. Like if you want to go to Barcelona, no, you can just. It's an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you want to go to there. Singapore, bloody <laughs> yeah. Nice place though. I I have two questions. So first one would be. What do you have a goal that you've scored, whether it's with Leeds or, or, or Zurich? 
And what, do you have like a go-to celebration or is it whatever you're feeling in the moment? Uh, I think I have two, like two goals. Uh, my first goal, of course, with the national team yeah. and uh, the goal against Menu. Oh, okay. Nice. That was a good goal. Yeah. yeah There's a rivalry so, there as well with Leeds. Yeah, now, which yeah. just makes so, it even better. Yeah, these two goals were my, like, I would say my favorite because they mean something for me, you know. But yeah, of course, the goal against Manu was... <laughs> I saw your celebration when you scored, you were shushing, wasn't you? Yeah, but <laughs> not really for the fans, yeah. you know, because I, I'm i not like this. But, but, you know, scoring after one minute, it was like everyone was shouting before. And f- when I scored, I, didn't, I couldn't hear Quiet. anyone. Like only our fans. So I was like, wow, what is this? You know, so I just shout. Nice. But yeah, of course, it's... It's not so good for the fans. Maybe I received some messages, but <laughs> yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, social media briefly, like as you just said, you received some messages. Yeah. Do you go on like Twitter and stuff regularly or do you try and stay away from that? Uh, no, of course I go sometimes. Yeah, but I just try to be a little bit far. You know, I yeah. don't really like to le- read comments or things like this. You know, I don't have Twitter. I only have Instagram. Okay. And yeah, I just go because of course I have my friends on it. I have, I like to stay on it sometimes, but I don't really read anything. I tried to find your Twitter before you come film just to do a little bit of research stuff. Couldn't find you. Found a lot of fan pages though, which, which <laughs> no, is good. It's too much. I think People, Twitter is too, too Twitter much. is Twitter, Twitter is gone. Much. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. It's gone downhill, let's say. Yeah. It is becoming a interesting place to have followers on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, we'll, we'll keep it PR friendly. <laughs> it's Twitter, you can not just the one. see Insta- everything. Instagram is my go-to now, but even just for following people, I don't like doing Instagram mm. stories because I don't like no, posting I'm, pictures and stuff I like that. I never do them. Yeah. No. I just go down, look some videos. Yeah, just a lurk and just scroll yeah. through yeah. TikTok, Instagram reels or TikToks and stuff like that. That's still I like funny. reels. Yeah, yeah. Real, real <laughs> like, good, real I good. like reels. They're so bad because they're all like twenty seconds long. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. it's been an hour, and you're like, "Yeah, yeah. what is it been possible? Doing? I yeah. need to sleep." I've been with TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. wow, TikTok is really bad. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is so bad because you just go and then it's three hours. Yeah, yeah. That's you're, true. I'll go. You're in bed and you're like, "Ah, oh, it's eleven p.m. I'll yeah. go to sleep," and you go, "Yeah, <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning." <laughs> so, <laughs> so bad every time. <laughs> That used to be me with playing games, which I've tried to get out of yeah. a little bit where I would eat my tea, eat my dinner, chill with my girlfriend for a bit. And then she goes to bed at an old time. I'd be like, oh, let's go and play FIFA. Let's go and play COD. Let's go and play. <laughs> and then I'd look and all of a sudden it'd be like, one more game, one more game, one more game, one more game. And then it's two o'clock in the morning and you're like, oh, probably should have gone to bed about three yeah. hours ago. Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah, and, then, and then you try and tell yourself the following day, like no more. And then you do it again. But then, then you find yourself on it again. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, next day. <laughs> next day is always, yeah. always come in. And then the new FIFA comes out or EAFC, yeah. as it's now going to be. What do you think of your rating on you, current you, FIFA? Are you 69 rated? 69. 69. Good pace though. Yeah. Good pace. But my shooting is terrible. <laughs> well, like, so for shooting specifically, if you had to, if you could edit your card now, what would you put your shooting as? <laughs> I don't know, but I think I have like 40 or 50 something. And I think 50, I don't know. 66? 66. So yeah, yeah, 66 shooting. That's wow. pretty. Wow. Yeah, That's not too bad. Good dribbling, 76. Do you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Maybe, For the moment, yeah. Maybe next year on EAFC, yeah, you'll course, get a, yeah. a better card. But for a silver card, that's it's okay. that's okay. I think they've niced you. Yeah, with yeah. with rating that's, to stats, I think they've niced you. But the, the rating, yeah, could be the better. rating is yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe you, next year we'll be. You've got eighty six agility also. in game, which is good. So you'll be quick. Yeah, yeah to move. Yeah. 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 Do you use your cell phone? FIFA no, on EAFC? I tried no. sometimes, but I'm so bad. That <laughs> just say no, no, nothing. What What you need to do next year for EAFC is ask for your 99 rated program. I will. I'll and then, no, no, it's going on Andy AJ free. We've oh, there we go. For you, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> let you have a go. I'll let you have a go. You're not allowed to competitive integrity. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah be, really. Yeah, if you gave me your 99 card, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to use it. Okay. Because I'd have an advantage. Because oh, yeah. yeah. all the other pro players would be playing mm-hmm. against. Yeah, yeah. Don't okay. have access to I'll your have card. A tor- I'll have a tournament and I'll play you up front with a 99 rate card. They'd be cheating. That's a question for you though. Jota. Diogo Jota is exactly. like yeah. insane at FIFA You as know well. I played him in an actual pro tournament. Yeah, yeah. But is he allowed to use his 99 rate version? No, he's not. But You're it's right. him. I have, do you know what? I played Jota. So like, <laughs> Why not? 
No, it's true. I, I played Jotu in like online, like an online game where there was no tournament, but I've also played him in a tournament. I matched him with his nighttime rate card. He was crazy. Really? Crazy. Cheating. So quick. Yeah, so I filmed a video with him playing Squabble the Showdown against him. And he says he plays it centre mid because it's so good. Yeah. Because it's got right 99 time. in everything. Yeah. And I was like, I'd stick myself up front. So he's like, no, I'm going to win. So <laughs> I'm putting him centre. He takes it so seriously. He's absolutely insane. It's in, what, what would you give yourself next year then? Not your 99 rated one. What would you... Uh, what do you think actually? Honestly, I would say 70... At least four, three. So I think gold. 75 and you'd be a non-rare gold. So 74 okay. would be... 74 would be like the best you could possibly best be silver. in a silver. Yeah. Then gold 75. 75. Okay. Yes, please. Nice. With 99 agility. I'll put a word in. <laughs> I'll put a word in. How accurate actually do you think... So your pace was 86? I think that's quite good. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good pace. But how accurate good, yeah. do you... Yeah. Do you think that's like on the money or... Do you think they're kind of just making it up and they just pick some random numbers? Like, you do you I guys in train and do like sprints? Uh, but like time it. Do you know in the co- in NFL they do the combine and they know how yeah, fast yeah. all of the. Yeah. Do you guys do that? Yeah, and just we do keep it. it secret. We do it. We do it. But I feel like some like mine. I think is quite good, but sometimes it's so wrong. You know, some players are way faster than they are on FIFA, and I'm like, how is it possible? Yeah. You know? is it the same player? And it's, but they, how can they know? Like, I guess but the, it's you have difficult, to, you know. But you have to wear them things in the game now, don't you? Underneath your yeah, shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, like tracks your GPS and all stuff like that. So they get the top speed. And yeah, they should know, but uh, yeah, they should know. Who think, is the it's... quickest player in Leeds? Depends we, of the distance. Sh- shall I tell you on FIFA? On FIFA, I think he's Sarah, maybe. Let me have, oh yeah, probably. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, yeah. it will be. He's very, very, very fast. Is he the fastest in real life as well, though? The VA got it right. I think no. I think Summer really is faster. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So I think Summer really is faster. Like. Sinister is 89. McKenney's 82, which is Ooh. quite that's good for a center mid. Yeah. 82. Yeah. yeah. For a center mid, though, that's quite good. <laughs> okay. To be fair, Furpo has a, a special card, doesn't he? True. Furpo's in form. He's got 89. 89. Yeah, yeah. it's like a special version. Yeah. yeah. You're up there though. Yeah, Somerville's 88. Oof. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it's pretty accurate. He's then. there, yeah. Yeah, but then when you see him or yourself race against someone who's got 95 pace <laughs> and you burn him and you're like, come on, give me 96. <laughs> <I> need- yeah. <laughs> At least. Yeah. At least. But I guess it goes both ways because then the rate defenders lower than these. It's like Van yeah. Dyke, for example, is absolutely rapid. But in, the, in real but in life, FIFA, he's like yeah. 15 pace mm-hmm. behind. Yeah, it's. it's we could go on for hours and hours and we hours could, yeah. about what people's ratings should be on FIFA or on the up- upcoming AFC. Shall we move on, Spencer, to some community questions? We can. We've got some of your fans, the fans of the podcast, the people online, to fire in some questions. So we've actually just gone through one and we've just yes. stolen Aaron Gates' question. I'm we sorry, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, we've just Wait, absolutely reading. stolen yeah, his thunder. Right. If you had to make your own FIFA card, what stats would you give yourself? So you 75? Yeah, Boost your pace up a bit. So, eight, so 86 pace now, next year... 90? No, I think 86. Do you think that's fair? Yeah. Okay, Okay. you're solid. Sorry, Aaron. We've stolen your thunder, mate. Apologies. (laughs) What's the next one? What have we got, Sven? Um, If you wasn't a footballer, I think it's two or three of us. So if you wasn't a footballer outside of that, what would you do for a living if it wasn't a professional footballer? And obviously the same question. It's difficult. Like now, I think I would be at the university, 100%. Because it's something that I I want to do it even now that I'm playing. And I think I will do it. When uh, you finish? What yeah. would you study? That's difficult. I don't really know. I think something still with sport or management or something like this. The, I would love to go back to university. The problem with it is you have to do the exams and you have yeah. to. So there's, <laughs> the, it's the strict of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I would love to just go to the lectures and just listen to them talk about interesting stuff yeah. and then just go to the seminars and just have a chat and a discussion yeah. about yeah. stuff yeah. like this. And then they're like, and now can you write me a 1500 word essay? And I'm like, I don't really want it to be honest with no, you. I'm paying yeah. you 10 grand a year to be here. Like, I don't really want you to. Yeah. But sometimes I miss like school, you know, being with my friends, being yeah. with someone, you know. And yeah, it's quite lonely sometimes when I play football, you know, no, because you only have your teammates, mm-hmm. maybe your family, you know, but. And when you move as well, it's difficult to yeah, make friends, have, especially yeah, when you come yeah. as an established profile. Yeah, like Because you don't really do anything apart from football. So mm-hmm. it's difficult. So. Yeah, that's fair. 
Um, so what about you, Andy? Corey96 wants to know if you wasn't a creator. So before I became... So I've been a YouTuber now. Yeah. We discussed this on the last podcast, and we, for like 10, 12 years, I've been doing it. And ended up at like... I pat myself on the back. Yeah, ends up pretty successfully, mm-hmm. which decent, is decent. good. Yeah. I, before that, was actually meant to become a teacher okay. to the point where I already had a job lined up as a teacher and all of the kids failed their exams to get into college. <laughs> so then the college rang me up beforehand, like three days before term was due to start. And I was like, oh, you know that job you've got? Yeah, we don't need you anymore. And the job was just gone. So then I was like, I had nothing yeah. to do. I'd just finished university. I got my actual degree. I was going to go and study to be a, mm-hmm. like the postgrad master's thing for a teacher on the side. So I just had a crack at being a YouTuber and it worked out quite well. If I had to stop being a YouTuber now, I don't think I'd go back and become a teacher. A, because the kids could get my YouTube videos up and play in class. <laughs> that would be terrible. Um, and B, just because people I know are teachers, teachers are so underpaid for what they have to do. What about a golfer? Oh, I'd love to be a professional golfer. There we go. There we I'd love go. to be. I'd love to be a presenter on like presenting football or the golf or something like that on the telly. I would. I think I'd be quite good at working in marketing or advertising, coming up with campaigns and how do we get when companies come to me and say, "Right, we've got this amount of money, we're going to pay you. We want you to get loads of eyeballs on JD or something like that." I'm quite good at coming up with an idea to do it. Yeah. So I think I would be quite good on the other side, like going to talent and pitching it and saying, let's do a campaign. I reckon that'd be what I'd go for. Well, mine's a little bit more boring. Um, something to do with PCs, like PC building, stuff like that. Okay. I think that was like the interest I had before yeah. I luckily got into what I'm doing now. But yeah, maybe it's not as uh, not as good as your two. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got? We've run out. We've run out. But Someone's yeah. just deleted all of the questions. <laughs> we have no more questions. But <laughs> if you do have any questions for the next podcast, make sure you uh, let us know down below in the comment section. One last question then, Spencer, before we go. Ooh, what, what, are you, what are you asking? It's a bit of a tough one. Where, what do you want to achieve in the next five years in football? Ooh, that's deep. Yeah, you put me on the spot. That is a deep one. I was going to ask you pineapple on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's really deep. <laughs> I, feel, I, I need a better question now. What have you done to me? I don't know. You've been on the spot. Give, oh, okay. Let me have a think of my question whilst he has to think about that, that answer. Okay. Maybe in your, in your career. So when, you're, when, you're, when you've retired, you want to look back. What, what is it something that you want to achieve? Uh, I would say I would like to win some trophies. Yeah. And maybe my biggest dream is to win the something with the national team. Yeah. I think the World Cup is the, the, the biggest pinnacle. dream for yeah. everyone, you know, and I feel like this is my biggest dream. I'm sure you'll do it. Fingers crossed. Yeah, Italy are always up there. Yeah, to be fair. So as long as you're <laughs> up there and yeah, doing well and in the team, you've got yeah, a very, very yes, good. Yeah. I do sometimes feel for very, very good footballers from smaller yeah. footballing nations where they are one of the best players in the world, but, but they, they play for yeah. they're from like a tiny country with a hundred thousand people, and it just happens that they were insane at football, but none of the other people from their nation are. I do sometimes feel that, but you've definitely got a very, very good chance of that if you. Keep your form up. I was going to go very basic and ask pineapple on pizza, but I'm going to ask <laughs> going to end on a slightly better question then, as Spencer's was so good. Something I'm always curious about is the behind the scenes working of a football transfer. So when you came from Zurich to Leeds, yeah. your arrival went viral. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, because it was last minute. Yeah. And then the welcome from Jesse Marsh, it was back then, wasn't it? How, how he gave you... Like welcome to the club, and he was like, yeah. put his arm around. It was like went viral on Twitter. From your point of view, are you sat at home, and then all of a sudden you're packing your house up and a lorry up and <laughs> driving to Leeds, or is it a usually a much more elongated process? No, I think it's much more because um, I knew that I could come from way before, you know, and I spoke already with uh, like the sporting di- director Victor, and I used to speak with the president as well. So yeah, I knew that I could come here, but I didn't really know if I would come now or maybe later or maybe I wouldn't even come, you know? Yeah. So it was quite funny because I didn't expect it. At, at one point I was like, no, I'm not going anymore. So I was like... Do you remember the home. moment when yeah. you got the phone call and yeah. you're like, I'm going to be a Premier League footballer? Yeah, it was like at 6 p.m. Uh, yeah, On I deadline training, day. Yeah, I training in the morning and I was home. I was like, yeah, I'm That's not crazy. going anywhere, That's you know? That's crazy. I think I slept also this that afternoon. <laughs> I, I woke up and I was 
maybe watching television or something like this and then they called me and they said like yeah prepare your stuff because maybe you are going tomorrow and they just ended like this you know <laughs> so i was waiting i was at home <laughs> and, suitcases yeah, packed yeah i was couch. like this waiting at home with my parents I, we were like this waiting and then they called us they, they said uh yeah go to the airport because you are going tonight then we went to the airport and they said no it's not ready yet go home so i was scared because i thought ah, I'm not going anymore, you know. I yes, was a like little a coaster sad. of emotions. Yes, yeah. I was a little bit sad. And then at like 11 p.m. in the night, they told us, like they sent us some emails yeah, to, to sign because I didn't sign here. Mm -hmm. I signed when I was at home, like via email, all this stuff. So I was like signing every time. They sent different type of emails. I was already <laughs> there signing everything, you know. And then they say, yeah, hold on, you know. Victor Orta called me. I was crying at the phone, you know, I was, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you man, for everything, for all this work, you know, because it was, of course, last minute. 11 in uh, Switzerland is 10, 10 a.m. Yeah. So an hour ago. Yeah, I didn't really think I would come, you know, at the end. But yeah, of course, everything happened so quickly and now I'm here. Now so here. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful to, for the club, for the opportunity. And yeah, I just try to give something back because I know that it wasn't easy for them and yeah i think now they are happy with me and i'm happy for this opportunity and just enjoy myself amazing i think that is a wonderful way to yeah. end yes. the podcast spencer yeah thank you for coming on and oh, thank you aj for being another co-host in replace of it's been amazing <laughs> thanks wilfried <laughs> thank see you, you next much. time thank you bye-bye